Alright Algo Learners, welcome back. Today we are going to go over Bollinger Bands. Um, and so, uh, you've probably seen these before, but up here I have a chart of uh, SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And so the, the start of the Bollinger Bands, um, basically it, it starts with a moving average. So we've been doing moving average all along. And so this is, uh, what we have up here is a 20 day moving average. So you can see it's that, that dark line, um, basically in, in the middle of everything. Um, and the uh, bands that you have, um, you have one standard deviation band, which is um, kind of this inner band. And then you have a two standard deviation band, which is kind of the outer band. Um, and so you could see when, um, and basically the standard deviation is um, the standard deviation of, of the prices for the last 20 days for the moving average basically. And so um, as things get more volatile, the band is going to widen because the standard deviation will go up. And so the, these, the bands will um, expand and then they'll get narrow. See a narrow spot up, up over here when the volatility goes down and you could see the, you know, basically the, you know, you don't have all of these, um, you know, basically uh, you have very small bars here, you know, very, very small bars. And then of course the result is the narrowing of the band. If you have very wide bars, as you can see the, the bars are starting to widen, then um, you're gonna get a much more wider band. So anyway, um, the, um, the premise of you know our trading strategy is that what we're going to do um, is when the price goes above the uh, two standard deviation band, we're going to sell short, and our exit is going to be when the price crosses the um, the twenty day moving average. So we'll exit out, we'll buy it back, uh, we'll close our position, we'll close our short position once it crosses the 20 day SMA. Um, we'll go into a long position when it closes, um, when the closing price is below the um, two standard deviation band. And then we'll exit when the price is above, we'll exit, we'll basically sell out uh, when the price closes above the SMA uh, for 20 days. So. Anyway, that's going to be our strategy. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to um, BlueShift. I have our code that we um, were working on last time uh, for the uh, version 5 for our moving average. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that. Um, and let's go ahead and basically start a new strategy. And let's just call this BB underscore v1 and the template <clears throat> let's just do buy and hold incidentally i just want to point out so they have bollinger band strategy they have an rsi which is what we're going to be doing in the next session um and so uh, if you go to and, well first let me just go ahead and set this up if you go to help up here and you go to tutorials um, they kind of walk you through a, a process um, of how to do the Bollinger Bands and the coding and RSI for the relative strength index, as well as just basically any algorithm. They kind of have this elegant way of um, you know, um, going about the algorithm. And we're going to do that today. We're going to use um, basically their um, process, if you will, to generate signals. And so, you know, what's going to happen is we want to basically generate a signal when the price goes either above, you know, the, the two standard deviation band or when it goes below the two standard deviation band. And then we, based off of that signal, we're going to go ahead and enter a trade. And then we're going to be monitoring that position for the uh, exit signal. And so if it crosses the SMA, the 20 day moving average, 
then um, that's going to trigger another signal for us to exit. So it's a more elegant way of doing it from what we've been doing in the um, in the past sessions, but I definitely wanted to uh, to show you how um, it works this time. So let's go ahead and hit Control V. And um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to we're we're going to knock quite a few things out today. So uh, as a matter of fact. Um, I want us just to close from here. Excuse me, we're gonna just delete all of that. We're gonna delete. Okay, so we've, we've deleted quite a bit here. I get it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're, we're gonna be starting more from scratch. Um, so one of the things that I want us to do um, today is I want us to, um, we're, we're actually gonna, Let's go ahead and create something that we haven't done in the past, but um, very important. So we're gonna create a dictionary to define um, our strategy parameters. I want us to get used to creating and using dictionaries. And this is gonna be for our parameters, so we're just gonna call it params. And then we're gonna go, um, we're gonna have our window, the, and so yeah, and so I'll explain this in a second. And then um, well, let me uh, let me not indent. Let me just go ahead and stay with this frequent frequency, and then we're just gonna go um, one day. Okay, so um, whenever we look at <coughs> creating a dictionary. Um, there's two um, values. There's a, a key, which is the first um, value, basically, that's in front of the colon, and then there's the value. And then frequency, which would be the key, and then the value would be one day. So uh, in, in this dictionary, we can call upon, because we have context, if we're just going to you know, pull through the context, these parameters, um, all we have to do is just go up to here and change our parameters um, and then we can change our algorithm. It makes things a lot more simpler. Um, we're going to create a couple more though. Um, so we're going to create some dictionaries. Actually, I'm just going to go and we're just going to create them off of this. Context signals equals. And so this is going to be a little different because we're going to um, security comma zero um, for security in context. Well, you know what? I'm gonna bear with me here. Instead of context universe, I'm gonna call this context securities. We're gonna need to print the length. All right, and um, we're not gonna need this data frame here either. Sorry, but um, okay. So um, for security and context dot securities. So what we've done here is we've created a dictionary context dot signals. Um, and our key is going to be the security and we're going to assign each security basically um, the value will be zero. So our signals, we're going to just set every security to a value of zero uh, for a signal. And then we have a little for loop here. So we're going to just go through every security in context securities and that will populate our dictionary. And so if I just print um, context signals. I'll show you what we have. I'll show you what the dictionary looks like. Um, let's just go ahead and come up here. Let's go to March. Let's just pick out the 19th. Okay, let's run this. Okay, here's our log and here's all of our securities. 
So basically, it's our stock universe, basically the S and P five hundred. Um, but what's and here's here's our remember we we uh, we converted our uh, string tickers into symbols, and so here's the the symbol um, basically that uh, the engine is looking for, and so um, you can see interesting how the dictionary ordered all of the symbols based on the number um, that it's looking for, that the engine is looking for. So, and it's all in numerical order. So, and then, so each security symbol is going to be the key. And then of course the signal has been assigned zero. Okay, so that's, that is um, dictionary. We're gonna create another dictionary here, context. And then we're gonna call this, um, we're gonna call this our target position. Cause we need to, we need to be able to track the weighting. So we're gonna call security zero. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna go ahead and create another dictionary. At first it's gonna look the same exact as our signals dictionary. And that's okay. Let me just cut this down here. Okay. All right. Um, so we have um, we have those dictionaries. All right. Where do we want to go here? Um, let's go ahead and. Um, Go ahead and schedule function. Schedule function. We're gonna call this um, we're gonna call it run strategy. And it's gonna be date rules every day. And um, time rules mark market open. All right. So and that's um. So let's go ahead and define our. Um, let's see. Through context and data. And so let's go ahead and back test. So we, we're just going to go ahead and print. If you haven't figured me out by now, you've, you know that I'm putting this in here for audit purposes. I like to see where we're at in our date and our time in the back test when we run it. And so every time that we do this function of run strategy, we're going to print the back test date and time um, just so we see where, where we're at. And so this is the more elegant part that I like. Um, we're actually going to um, call a couple different functions here. So we're going to generate our signals, pass through context and data. We're going to generate um, target position, pass through context, data, and then we're going to rebalance context and data. Okay, and then in that order. And so we're gonna generate the signals, then we're gonna generate the target position, which is basically gonna assign weights to our um, our positions, and then we're gonna trade. Um, that's our, gonna be our rebalance function. Um, so the first one, let's just go ahead and set up the generate signals 
first. I think that will uh, get us on the right start. Context data. Okay, so I'm gonna just have us hit. We're gonna print. This is step one. Generate signals. Okay. We're gonna call price data. It was data history context securities close um, context prams remember that window and then context params frequent see so what we're doing is we're calling on our dictionary and this will automatically bring in the window of uh, 20 days and then a frequency of one day. So we're gonna go ahead and get our, uh, our price data. All right, so we got our price data. Um, okay, now what I want us to do, I want us to assign signals into our signal dictionary for each security. So we got to iterate basically through each security. So we're going to use this for loop. So for security in context signals, no, no actually we're going to do context securities, our list. So. Basically, we're going to go to our list, context securities, and we're going to go through each security. And we're going to pull down the price, um, price data. Um, we're going to go. All right. So basically, we're going to be pulling down. Um, oh, I already see an error right here. This should be a colon not a semicolon. So um, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling down every um, every closing price for each security. So it's 20 days of closing prices that we're pulling down um, for each security. We're going to go security by security. Okay, and this will give us a series. <sighs> We're going to be looping through all of our securities and getting the price data. Um, if I go back and say set a start date, um, you know, let's just say January 1, um, there are going to be some securities in my list of tickers that were not in the S&P 500 back in 2009. Right? Um, and so remember, we, we, when we were looking at moving averages and we were looking at um, how many securities were over their um, 200 moving day average, how many were under it, how many, um, what, what was the average um, percentage of, of uh, days that the securities were over their 200 moving day average and under. And remember that little exercise we did? But when we did it and we set the time back to 2009, 2008, I think August 2008, um, we only only like 250 of our um, list of tickers were actually um, active back then. And so um, if there is like, like I can tell you right here, um, AbbV, um, that is not, that is, was not part of the S&P 500 back in 2009. And so if we try to run this, um, there's, there's going to be basically NANs that are going to be populated into the series for AbbV. Okay. And so what we want to do is, um, just so our algorithm doesn't get all, um, you know, filled up with errors, we're just going to go ahead and fill NAs. So NANN or NANs. We're going to just fill them with zeros. 
All right, and so that will help us. And then we're gonna ask if the last price that we get, which is px negative one, so that's the, the very last price in our data, in our, in our series, the most recent, let's put it that way. Um, if it equals zero, all right, so that must mean that we don't have any data because we filled it with a zero. And, um, and so if our last price is zero, well then what, th what we're gonna do is we're gonna set context signals security to two. All right, and so basically this is the signals, no data yet for security, okay? All right, and, and so that's, whenever we set a signal to two, that means we don't have any data yet for it. But if we get past this point, and so basically, Elif context signal security equals zero or context signals security equals two. Well, then we're gonna go contact signals security equals signal function. So we're gonna create a new function. We're gonna pass through the price and we're gonna pass through the context params. All right. Um, and then if context signals security equals one. So basically a signal of one means that we um, have a long position. So we have a long position. then we are going to want to go to another function that we're gonna set up called a long exit function. We're gonna pass through the price there, our price data and our contact params. All right, and then last one, LF context signals security equals negative one. So if we have a negative one signal, we're gonna be in, in a short position. Context signals security. Then we're gonna just go to our short exit function. Text params. All right, so, um, Let's go now. Let's go to, I mean, let's do signal function. And we're going to put through our price and our params. And all right. So basically, this is going to be our main trading logic logic to generate initial signals. Okay, um, let's do SMA. So what do we have? We have a price, PX is coming through. So um, we're gonna just call our simple moving average. Uh, we need to get, remember it was 20 days our window. So PX will be 20 days of data. And remember, we take the mean 
Um, and so that will give us our uh, 20 day moving average point. And then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna take the standard deviation of our 20 day series. All right, so that'll give us our standard deviation. And then we also want our last price, which we already saw that, that's uh, PX, um, so bracket negative one, so that's the most recent price, our last price. <clears throat> okay, um, let's go ahead and define our Bollinger Bands. And so let's do UB for upper band. So the upper band two is basically our SMA plus two times our standard deviation. And our upper band one, the SMA, I mean, this is a quick and dirty way to do it, guys. But, um, you know, so there's a lot more other elegant ways and, you know, um, a lot more precision out there. But this, we're going to be lower band one equals SMA minus the standard deviation. And then our lower band two equals SMA minus two times our standard deviation. All right, so we got a lot of points here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our logic. And so um, if our last price is greater than our um, upper band two, all right, then we're gonna return negative one. Okay, right, so negative one uh, is a signal for selling short. And so if our price gets above the upper band two, so it's two standard deviations above the 20 day moving average, then we're gonna sell short. And so that's our signal. Um, LF, um, last price less than the lower band two, we're gonna buy long. So we're gonna return a one. All right, but if we're not in any of those, return zero. So our signal will be zero. So in our dictionary, right? So we're populating either a negative one, a one, or a zero. Our dictionary already says zero for each security. So if um, the signal isn't triggered by a negative, you know, by by being above the um, upper band two or below the lower band two, then if it's in between, then it's going to return zero, and we're not going to do anything, and it's uh, we're not going to buy or sell that position. All right, but if it's negative one or one, then we, you know, that's our signal. Uh, Why we're here. Um, let's go ahead and build out the functions. So, so basically, um, look, um, as we come through here, I'm just going to go back up to the for loop, uh, where we're assigning our signals. So here, here's the elegance of it, right? So let's just say that, um, the last price was indeed greater than the upper bound, um, uh, Bollinger band two, the upper band two and it returns negative one. So the signal function, the signal function is going to return a negative one. So if we go up here, back to our uh, assignment, context signals for the security, our dictionary is going to um, have a value of negative one. And so, our dictionary, if I were to print out our dictionary at that point, you would see the actual security with a negative one as its value, okay? And we got to the signal function because, you know, if we run through our dictionary and we actually have good pricing, you know, our pricing isn't a bunch of zeros, we have good pricing, then we, we actually will get to this point and our dictionary automatically, right from the start, assigned every security a zero. And so that means this LF 
condition will be triggered and we will be directed to go to this function to find the signal, okay? So now uh, if it's negative one, all right, then we'll go through the trading logic, we'll assign the target positions, we'll generate that, and then we'll, we'll, we'll actually sell it short through the rebalance, we'll go through all that. Um, but let's say we did and we actually, um, we went ahead and it's time now to short out. It's time to see if it's time to exit. And so the next time that we run through this, our contact signal security will equal negative one because that's what the dictionary said it, it should be and because we assigned it to negative one. And then it will trigger us to go to the short exit function, okay? If it were, if we actually were uh, returning a one, then we would, you know, the next, the next day, we'd come through this this logic here and it would direct us to the long exit function. So let's go ahead and the long exit function, same thing, passing through our prices, our price data set. Um, and so here we go. Um, I am going to just copy this, copy, Okay, you know, could I have put that up here somewhere? Yes, I could have, um, but anyway, um, so the next day when we go to um, see if we're gonna exit out of our long function, we're going to redo all of these with the new data. We're gonna reset all of these um, data points with our new data, our condition. So if last price, is greater than our 20 day moving average, then that's our exit. We're gonna return a zero, okay, return zero. So basically that means the signal is, you know, we we aren't long or short anymore. So this are basically, we're gonna be closing out our position. Um, but if it's not, well, we still wanna stay in our long position. So we're gonna return to one. And that will allow us to just stay put in our long position. But if our long or if our last price does creep above the 20 day moving average, we're out um, and we'll sell and it will return a zero. And then now we're back into the, the zero signal and you know we're, we're gonna be waiting for another signal for that stock. So anyhow, um, and then let's define our short exit function. All right, and let me just copy it all and paste it. Just be a little easier. So basically if our last price is less than um, the 20 day moving average, we're going to exit out. Otherwise we're gonna um, return a negative one, which means we still want to stay in our short position. Okay. Let me indent this so I don't get syntaxed. All right. So, um, those are exit functions again, um, pretty simple. So we have our signal function, which, um, either puts us into, a um, a short position or a long position, or just has us hanging tight. And then if we're in a long position, then we're gonna see, you know, if the um, if everything lines up for us to exit it. If it's not, we stay in a long position. Or if we were in the short position, does everything line up for us to exit the short? Um, or do we just stay put and stay in the short? So uh, again, a little bit more elegant way of, um, you know, how to handle signals. Um, so that's how we're going to generate signals, folks. Um, I will go ahead and push forward. Uh, let's go ahead and um, create a new function here. Let's do our generate target position context data.
print. Step two. Generate target position. All right. Um, so what do we do here? Um, we're going to go context stocks equals zero. And then we're going to iterate through securities. Context security. So we're going to go through each security in our security list. And actually, we're not. My my bad. That's inefficient. We want to go through each in our context signal dictionary. Yeah, that's much more efficient. If context signal security equals one or context signals security equals um, negative one. So, so basically it's going to comb through our dictionary and go through all of the keys, which are, is, is the security. And if any values show up as a one or a negative one, well, that's gonna trigger this. That's gonna trigger our condition. And we're gonna do context stocks um, cool, um, plus one, okay? So we're just going to, which is the same as Plus one, okay? But I'll leave it like that. Some people are more comfortable with seeing that context dot stock equals context dot stock plus one. What we're doing is we're counting the number of stocks. Remember, this is our counter up here. We set it to zero. And so we're just gonna be counting the number of stocks. That's gonna help us set our weighting, okay? That's why we're doing it. Um, I like to do this though, print. Um, and we're just gonna make it quick and dirty here. Stocks to trade. That's wrong. I forgot. I gotta go back. Stocks to trade. And that's context. Not stocks. So that would just tell us. So as we look through, this is just gonna tell us how many stocks that we're actually gonna be trading. I wanna see it, right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna set an equal weighting to the total number of stocks with a one or negative one signal. All right, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do, we're gonna condition this out. So if context stocks equals zero, so we don't have any that showed up, then we're gonna set the weight to zero. It's gonna be very rare that that happens. Context stocks greater than zero. So basically, if we have some positions we have to trade, we're gonna set our weight, it's gonna be equal to one, zero divided by context stocks. Okay, that will give us our weight. All right, and then I wanna print weight. Wait, okay. And then I want to assign weightings into a dictionary for each stock with one or negative one 
signal. Okay, well, we have a dictionary for this, right? So um, for security and context securities, so we'll cycle through each one. If context signals security equals one, well then our context target position Remember, that's our, um, our other dictionary, or equal weight. Okay, so one, um, I keep doing that, that's wrong. Get a big fat syntax, syntax error by doing that. So, so if um, the value in our signal dictionary is one, which means we're, we're gonna be long, uh, then we want a positive weight. Right, so we want a positive weight. All right, LF, you can see what's coming. Negative one. So you probably already see what we're gonna do here. Equals negative weight. Okay, that will allow us to sell short. Um, got one more. Like, well, what's left? Well, zero's left. And what am I gonna do? Because there are some situations where we might be at a one already or at a negative one. And then all of a sudden um, we get to our exit and now it assigns the signal as a zero. And so now as we cycle through this, um, now that our signal is now a zero for that security, we need to set its position. So it has a waiting and had a waiting when it was a, a long or a short at a one or a negative one. So there was a waiting to it. Well, we're going to reassign its target position to be a zero. So we'll have no more weight. And not only that, but we're gonna get out of it right here and now. We're just gonna get out of it right then and there. So, um, that will allow us to do that. Okay, so now we have assigned our weightings for each of the securities that we need to either go long or short on, okay? So now we're gonna do our last function. Re rebalance on text. I love coming up here. I find all these things that I would have all these syntax errors. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now we're at our uh, time to trade, right? So time to trade and uh, pretty simple. So let's just make sure we uh, print here. This will be our step three, right? Rebalance function. Okay. So we'll print that out in our log. And then so for security, that's a little messy, let me space this a little bit. I just see this back down here. Instead of four securities, it's gotta be security, all right? So how do I made it? for securities, then it, that's the wrong key, right? I mean, it's it's not, it's it, it might've done it. It might've actually done it, but you know, um, it's just not, it's just not good code. So um, I'd have to change these out to securities, but I'm fine. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, just had the wrong, um, the nomenclature in the for loop. So for security, in context, um, what am I doing here? Securities. So 
we're going to loop through all of the securities in our contact security list. Um, if contacts, that's what I want. Target wrong. Target position of our security. So is that? does not equal zero. So if it does not equal zero, that must mean that, so, so what are we doing? We're going to the dictionary and we're going to look up the security and we're gonna see what the value is for that security. And if it's not zero, that must mean that it has a weighting uh, assigned to it in the dictionary. And if it has a weighting, well, what do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna order. Order target percent security. And what is the weighting? How do we find it? Well, hey, that's, that's why we have a dictionary. So um, contacts.target underscore position for the security is going to be give us the weighting. And so we will order um, that security according to its weighting. It might be a long weighting or a short weighting, but it's gonna order it. And um, I think what I wanna do just to see, I'm just gonna call it traded. We're going to just go security and we're going to go context target position security. Just wanted to verify in the logs that, hey, we've traded something. So basically when it, it says the number of trades should be 10, we should have 10 of these lines printed with securities and you know, a weight of e either um, a positive 10% or a negative 10%, you know? So that's that's if we have 10 securities that we're trading, right? Because the weight will be one divided by 10. So um, that's what we're looking for. And then once we get to this point, right, we might as well clear out the um, value for that particular security in the dictionary and we'll reset that to zero. So the next time that we come through, we just don't have a weighting that's arbitrarily out there. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here and save the strategy. All right, I uh, took the liberty of running it, doing a quick run. Um, <clears throat> I paused it, did a quick run. Um, I wanna show you, I missed a bunch of um, colons um, welcome to my world. So, um, missed one after, um, generate target position. So you're going to need to, uh, put a call in there. Um, missed one after the generate signals. Boom. Forgot that. Missed one after the if down here. Boom. Got to put that one in. Um, signal function. I got that. But I missed here for the long exit function and I missed the short exit function. So, and I missed down here. All right. So, um, I think we got it all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see if we uh, shouldn't have any more um, syntax errors. And then we should see what we have. Um, only running it for um, I think I was just running it for a couple months. We are going through every security though, um, in our list. So it may take, uh, it's, it's happening pretty fast. Great. All right. So, um, again, I could care less about the portfolio value. Um, you know, I'm not really trying to do that. I'm just trying to get the, <laughs> the algorithm to work. Um, and so here we go with the logs. So again, I ran this from January 1 
of 21 through March 19th of 21. Um, and so here, this is interesting. So um, let me just kind of walk through this. And so every day we come up here at the start of the day and we run our strategy. It prints the back test date and time right here, January 5th, 2021, 9.30. First thing that we do, generate signals. So we right here in the code, it goes to the generate signal code. So then we go to generate signals, boom, print. Step one, generate signals. There it is, step one, generate signals. So we generated our signals, there was nothing to print. Um, went through all of, uh, of course, we had at, at, on that date, there was no long exit function or short exit function because we had no positions. All right. Um, and so then we're done with generate signals. So we go to step two, which would be the generate target position. So step two prints that there it is generate target position. So it ran through um, our little for loop here and it found in the context signal dictionary that we must have had um, 34 positions that either had a signal of a one or a negative one, okay? And so one divided by 34 gives us that weight, just um, pretty small, right? So the weighting is, is pretty small, uh, probably close to 3% each position. And so then we wanna trade, so we have 34 positions we need to trade. So we come up here to our rebalance function, we do the for loop, and here's our 34 positions. You can see which ones we went long, kind of which ones we went short. And, um, you know, so of course the ones that were long are below the lower bound by two standard deviations. So that's the lower band, uh, two standard deviations. And then the ones that we went um, short on were a uh, above the upper band, uh, the two standard deviation upper band. So that's the 34 there. And then, um, oh wow. And then here you could see, um, as we moved on, we had 103 positions uh, on the sixth and then so forth and so forth. And so um, it looks like we have, um, you know, that it works and we have good data. Um, but anyhow, I just wanna make sure the stocks to trade resets to zero every time yeah, there it is. Context stocks equals zero. So every time it is going to reset. So um, uh, if you want to audit this, you could you could definitely go back and audit it by putting print. You could print the dictionary. You can print the um, uh, as you go to see what the values are in the dictionary. You could also do um, context, you know, portfolio positions. So you could see uh, the portfolios at any time. Lots of different ways to audit this. But anyway, um, this was meant to be just a, a quick primer on Bollinger Bands. It uh, wasn't so quick, um, but uh, I, I definitely wanted to go over kind of a, a more elegant way of generating signals and then creating weightings off of those signals and then um, making our purchases and sales and then doing it all over the next day and rebalancing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that subscribe button. Um, the next time that we are going to get together, um, we'll be doing a relative strength index. I'm gonna use the same uh, format here, kind of, you know, the, the same way of generating signals, but we'll, uh, we'll use the relative strength index. And then what we'll end up doing after that, I definitely want to get into a conversation around bias and backtesting. Uh, there's lots of different bias out there. Um, you know, one that we're continually violating um, that's here is is one where you know we're using the current list of securities um, and we call this the survivorship bias um, back in 2008 there might be only 250 of these tickers that were part of the s p 500 back then well what about the other 250 
Um, you know, maybe they didn't, they weren't successful stocks and maybe they, their market capitalization fell to so, so small to where they were kicked out of the S and P 500, or maybe they were purchased, uh, and took, you know, and acquired by another company that might not even be in the, um, S and P 500, or maybe they were taken, uh, taken out to go private. Who knows? Uh, it was just a whole list of things, but, uh, the point is, um, you know, the constituents of, you know, the S&P 500, when you test your algorithm on a back test, you really want to test it with all 500 constituents back in 2009. Um, because just testing it with the survivors uh, might skew your results to something much more positive, right? So if you noticed, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time going back and really, um, you know, investigating my back test and, you know, seeing what, um, you know, what results are, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Um, because we have all these biases and there's other biases too, um, that I want us to review and go over before we really start looking at back testing results and understanding how, uh, we can make sure that our back test results, uh, are actually giving us, um, good signals as opposed to, you know, things that are inflated that when we put into use in real life trading, that it will never work. Uh, we'll never get the same results because there's just too many biases that we ignored. So anyway, enough about that. That will be uh, after relative strength index, but I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of what we're going to be going into next. Anyway, remember, you got this.